So OBS and Windows disagree on what the default mic is. As a result, this video was recorded on the wrong microphone. Thankfully, my girlfriend slash editor, Nene, cleaned up the audio somewhat, so I didn't have to completely scrap everything, although I do apologize it's not up to the minimum quality that I would normally like to present. Hello, and welcome to Purvis Wisdram. I just spontaneously decided it's time to start recording as I was flying this plane over one of Kerbin's oceans, and uh, there's a bit of debris down there that is from a KX-02 Wyvern, which is a plane from Ace Combat, and is also, hold on a second, let me, there you go, deselect it, is also what I'm flying right now. It's not quite the Wyvern from Ace Combat, which is why I called it the KX-02, it's also heavily inspired by someone else's attempt at making the Wyvern, which was probably a bit more faithful to the real thing, but had a larger part count and was... I believe a bit bigger as well, I'm not quite certain. This thing is pretty fun to fly, I took it on a zoom climb up to 28 kilometers high, and it glides remarkably well, I mean you can see our surface speed is about to fall below 100 meters per second at 8 kilometers up, and we're still maintaining flight quite well. I'm really not sure just how well it can glide, I know that it can quite well and it can go quite distance, I mean this distance that I've gone right now is fairly decent, not the best. I really need to come up with a better system for flying long distance, maybe. I don't know. I just felt like I should land it here next to where I attempted to land the other one, and I didn't, so I turned away from my original flight path, which was quite ridiculous. This thing can also go, if I remember correctly, about 900 meters per second at sea level, which is quite insane, so I'm going to demonstrate that now. Not really. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and pull up, go straight down. Um, I'm going to pull up pretty soon though here because I don't remember the tolerance of this particular Kerbal's G-Force limits, but uh, it's probably not great. See, I've almost made it pass out already, and this thing can very easily lead to Kerbal deaths from over G uh, from them passing out. There you go, now that I've uh, calmed it down a bit more. Obviously the fuel consumption gets quite ridiculous when you engage it at this full speed. But uh, still very pliable, very controllable. It's a bit jittery, just just a little bit, as you would be too if you were flying this low, this fast. As you can see, there's the debris from the other one that I landed. I believe I recovered the cockpit, but not the rest of the design. And uh, did I say 900 meters per second? Because apparently I meant a thousand. Because if I could uh, stop hitting buttons for a moment and let this stabilize. We're gonna crash into the ground if I don't pull up those, so I'm gonna have to pull up just ever so slightly. Whoa, that was very close to losing consciousness. Anyhow, if I turn off or turn the engines to uh, the regular mode, you can see that they don't re engage until we drop down below 800 meters per second almost, because, yeah, it's a bit ridiculous. And uh, with these engines engaged, uh, we can actually fly at about. Notice that I do not have time warp on, it's just that jittery when you're going this fast. Uh, we can fly around 700 meters per second just fine at this low altitude with those at full throttle. Right now what I'm going to do though is I'm going to pull up as hard as I can. Well, now I know the part G limits. I mean, I don't know exactly what they are, but uh, apparently it took 56 Gs before it did that. I was intending to land this, I swear. I wasn't going to kill them, but then I did something stupid and I think about it, so yeah, that's, that's pretty stupid. As you can imagine, this thing is quite maneuverable, very fast, as I already demonstrated, and uh, yes, it does have some strange rudders being under the fuselage. Basically, I wanted to preserve the forward and upper appearance without compromising the stability for horizontal for side slip, you know? So I added some rudders in the back there. Their position almost might make you think that they have give it some issue with taking off and landing, but they really do not, which is awesome. Also, does this have steering on the front wheel? Okay, I'm going to need to modify this very quickly to make sure that the front nose has TOG Global steering on Action Group 9. That's something that I've been trying to make sure I remember to do. I mean, obviously you can just right-click it yourself, but it's easier if it's just in the Action Groups. And that's not the only thing I'm showing off today. I'm also showing off the KIG 21 bis fish bed, which is, as the name might imply, it's inspired by the MiG-21 fish bed. I called it the KIG 
It is similar, but not the same. I was looking at the reference material being primarily of another person's design of this kind of plane rather than the real thing. So it's not exactly 100% accurate, which is why I didn't want to give it the proper name. I'm also obviously going to time warp us just a little bit to get some daylight in here because, well, I do like night flying somewhat. It is certainly easier to demonstrate things with the daytime flying. And, oh yes, let's disengage the brakes, engage the SAS. I was momentarily very confused because I was like, why are we not rolling forward? I've engaged the throttle. Why are we not moving? And uh, as you can see, our thrust to weight ratio is quite substantial. It's not going all the way to one, if I remember correctly, but it is quite substantial. Uh, an earlier prototype of this particular design had uh, the flaps not allowing for proper control because they were too extreme. The difference between the flaps being deployed and not uh, really screwed with your ability to take off. So this version, I've reduced the flaps ever so slightly. Of course, I'm talking about the design and development phase of building this piece right now. I'm also very happy with the wings being designed the way they are because they're literally a central delta wing with just an extra bit of leading edge with these swept wings. And there's nothing else going on here. No funny tricks or anything. That's all it is. Oh yes. This right here, this small nose cone is simply to improve aerodynamics because I wanted to give this very good performance. Basically, the piece directly behind the cockpit, because even though it's behind a rounded object in the cockpit's shape, because of the way KSP physics work, that was a flat nose exposed to the airstream, which would cause greater aerodynamic drag. But if I put a nose cone in it, it has less, and then the nose cone is moved inside the fuselage so that it doesn't interfere with the IVA or the external aesthetics of the craft. And uh, yeah, besides, besides that, and just kind of showing you that it flies quite well, uh, that's, that's all there really is to it. Of course, it has five pylons on it for mounting whatever you want to add on board. It has good flight characteristics. The number one thing about it, though, is that uh, just like real Russian aircraft, you have to use your senses, like be logical, be a better pilot in order to fly it more effectively because it will not hold your hand. It will allow you to do stupid maneuvers, which obviously is all I do in KSP. Okay, that's not true. I do some non-stupid maneuvers too, but largely speaking, I do a lot of really dumb maneuvers. I'm gonna go ahead and stick us up to a very low throttle, but still not quite idle. And I'm gonna, actually, no, I'm gonna cut the throttle entirely. Well, no, I'm not gonna cut the throttle entirely just yet. Although I will relatively soon. I'm going to pull us in this tight maneuver, losing a lot of airspeed, turning around and coming back to line up for the runway pretty quickly, pretty cleverly. Obviously, I'm not lined up quite right. I'm going to engage flaps. It's going to give us a whole extra world of trouble. And I forgot that I left the cockpit camera facing not quite the direction that I intended. And I also, that first uh, nearly coming to a touchdown was not what I intended. I forgot to disable the wheel steering. So I actually disabled that just after touchdown. I'm going to go ahead and reduce the flaps, turn off the SAS, let us fly along here a little bit. Right now you can see I am controlling our steering with just the tail. At least I thought I was. Huh, apparently I did turn off the wheel steer and I didn't realize it and I'd actually turned it on just now. So that was rather dumb of me. But in any case, I'm turning it back on and we're going to turn and head towards the SPH at full throttle because that's safe. I'm kidding. I'm actually going to stop it right here to show you the star of today's episode. You might be asking yourself, what could possibly be better than a fictional plane from Ace Combat with excellent performance capabilities and a MiG-21? And it is an F4 Phantom II. I saw someone make a very good replica of this on Kerbal X, but as is typical for me, I didn't like the part count and I didn't like the way certain things were clipped together, so I decided to make my own. And the hard points on this are a little strange. Uh, the whole thing's a little strange, but I'm quite happy with how this replica came out and how it performs. You can see there is a tiny bit of adjustment to the aerodynamics in the form of mostly hidden basic fins, but I also decided I really like the look of them just poking up ever so slightly 
right in the intakes and being just like, oh, they're part of the intake system. I'm not sure what I'm saying, but I just really like positioning them like that. I also, if I remember correctly, okay, it does have flaps, does have wheel steering toggleable. The hard points are a little strange. The way this tail is actually built, this piece right here, this NCS adapter is actually directly connected to the cockpit's rear node. So you'll notice from underneath, there's actually no, um, nothing following up from that. In fact, this whole rear part of the plane is just these two fuselages put together uh, in order to make it function right and look right. These uh, small hard points are actually directly connected to the cockpit, which I know isn't the best. Typically, I prefer to avoid uh, having things attached and separated, offset distantly from where they go to. Originally, I also had the landing gear quite a bit further forwards, inwards, and the uh, wings were too high, but I adjusted those and tried to fix it up as best I could, and I repositioned them to a better location, and it's more sensible for the actual design. I got a bit of clipping here that I'm not the happiest with in between the tail connector and these Weasleys, but I am happy with it overall. Like, it's not... A, a deal breaker. This thing can reach about Mach 1, maybe Mach 1.1. I don't quite remember if it can quite get that far. It is possible. I suppose in a dive, it definitely can. You know, so we do have one fuel tank that would have oxidizer in it if it, you know, if I had put the oxidizer in it. And we have three drop tanks of fuel coming on here. By default, we do have flaps. We do have ailerons, obviously. We have the characteristic upward the uh, dihedral wing tips, which was very difficult to do in KSP because we only really have two sizes of delta wing and I wanted to preserve the delta wing style very well. But I figured that if I just use multiple wing pieces, which yes, unfortunately is a bit cheaty and gives this more lift than it otherwise should, it does allow me to make this wing shape right. The dog tooth isn't quite right. Dog tooth refers to this wing not being perfectly straight on the front it's a real feature you should check it out it's it's actually a really neat aerodynamic feature it prevents stalling if i remember correctly uh or at least it reduces stalling to a certain extent allowing you to perform higher angle of attack maneuvers and uh again because of these delta wings the size of them this dog tooth is far too close to the center line than it should be however it was uh very nice for what i wanted if i remember correctly okay yes uh just this center tank oh yeah okay no that center tank and these two are all not carrying fuel in order to get the balance of the center of weight right but that said even without the drop tanks this thing carries a monster fuel load and with the drop tanks it can go an extra almost a quarter well somewhere between an eighth and a quarter of the way around the circumference of Kerbin. i did a long test flight with one of these not really intending to, but I just sort of sometimes open up KSP and start flying things just for the heck of it. And uh, that's what I did, and it was really enjoyable. And so, yeah, it's an F4 Phantom II, and I'm super happy with it. For this particular flight, I will show off the flaps, which you can see are the inside most ailerons, as well as right next to the fuselage. Uh, this is not quite accurate but it's closer to accurate. It's out of what I could achieve in KSP. I'm quite happy with the result. And as you can see, it can take off at a fairly low speed. Uh, we're slightly not gaining positive rate there, so I'm pulling this up just a little bit more. And I can also disengage the flaps. And you might notice the ailerons are actually, like I said, the inner aileron is part of the flaps, but then the outer aileron is actually directly next to where the wing is swept upwards slightly. And it doesn't have the greatest performance in terms of thrust weight ratio, but it does perform quite well. And I am just super happy with the combination of how it feels to fly and its performance as a, well, as what it is. I'm gonna go ahead and drop the drop tanks directly into the VAB and then accidentally crash into it myself as well. <laughs> Good job, me. Oh, fuck, I didn't mean to do that. Completely unrelated to this, by the way, I am planning on making a, whatchamacallit, International Space Station, but like a kerbalized form of the International Space Station. I actually started working on a more realistic 
ISS in KSB a while back, but it hasn't gone entirely as intended, and therefore I'm not going to continue with it in its original form. However, I am going to fly very close to the VAB right here. I just thought you'd like a little preview of something I'm uh, working on. Obviously, our thrust-to-weight ratio is 0.79, and uh, it's not the best with the drop tanks on board, but as soon as you launch them, and I decided to launch the extra pylons just because, you can see our thrust-to-weight ratio does jump up quite a bit, as well as our level of explosions, which is always a good thing to keep track of when you're flying a plane in KSP. Always got to have good levels of explosions. And from the cockpit, you can see the wing angle actually does appear very slightly. I believe that's just a, that's just because the outer wing tips have that dihedral upwardsness. Upwardsness? Yeah, sure. Let's go with that. I'm gonna go ahead and pull a loop. Well, technically not a loop, just to split us, which is the thing that I do most often when I say I'm going to pull a loop because I most often pull a loop at low altitude, and at a low altitude you can't really pull a full loop because else you'll crash into the ground because you'll lose too much uh, altitude. Ooh, I should have pulled out of that a little quicker, but it's all right. I pulled out of it relatively okay. The roll performance isn't the best! Which is a slight thing to be aware of while flying this craft.